my first uh, video that will be in the new format. Before I did it, I would just read from a piece of paper. And many users, even people who liked my videos, commented that that was kind of boring, and I'll agree with them. So now I'm trying to switch things up. And it may be a little bumpy at first because uh, I've never just talked to the camera like this before for a YouTube video without any sort of thing in front of me telling me what to say. I know I'm an automaton, I can't think for myself. But in any case, I'm going to try this. So for the first few videos it may be a little bit bumpy, but yeah, hopefully in the end it'll work. And hopefully some people on YouTube will realize that the, the kind of behavior that they have thrown on my video is actually very harmful for me. And uh, I'm very clearly very sensitive about my lisp, so I would appreciate it if you could just pretend that the lisp did not exist. Is that okay? Okay. So without further ado, my first review is Iron Man. Now, I saw Iron Man a couple weeks ago, and I must say that I was very, very impressed. It is easily one of the best superhero movies of all time. Um, it's my personal third favorite movie of all time, and number one is Spider-Man 2 and number two is X-Men 2. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of just flipped you off there. Oh well. Deal with it. Um, so, Iron Man follows the story of Tony Stark, and he owns Stark Industries, which is a weapons manufacturer. So one day, he's making a deal with the U.S. military in the Middle East, and a con some terrorists attack his convoy. And the reason they attack his convoy is because they want they want Stark, they kill everyone except Stark, and they want Stark to build a new weapon. A weapon called the Jericho that um, his company had just sold to the US military. So they put him in a cave with a whole bunch of weaponry and say, here, use this weaponry to build the Jericho. And of course, for those who have seen the trailers, everyone knows that he doesn't actually build the weapon, he builds the Iron Man suit and thus escapes. And he escapes over to the US, and once he reaches the US, um, he realizes he's gone through a kind of change of mind um, because the terrorists attacked him with his own weapons, with Stark weapons, and he thought that his weapons would never get into the wrong hands, that the U.S. military would always have them, and that no one else would have them. So he tries to go about shutting down the weapons division of Stark Industries, and he encounters some opposition from uh, the board of directors and all that, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Um, Two problems I have with the, this initial setup. One problem is that the terrorists are incredibly stupid in this story because they just put Tony Stark in this cave and they expect him to magically do whatever the hell they want him to do. And it's just really stupid because he's building a frickin' suit which I think looks nothing like a Jericho missile. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. So, yeah, they put him in a room, and they trained cameras on them, so at first they thought it was going to be okay, but then the cameras... Yeah, in the end he just escapes, and steps through this big, big plot hole. Another big problem I had with the movie, well, not a big problem, a smaller problem, was that he's too naive... <sighs> Tony Stark is too naive. And let me explain. He is dumbfounded and appalled to find out that his weapons are falling into the wrong hands. And I think if you're a weapons manufacturer, somewhere or another your weapons are going to fall into the wrong hands and it's just part of global politics. Whether or not you like it, it's going to happen more likely than not. I mean, yeah, just look at history and you'll see what I'm talking about. So the fact that some savvy weapons dealer like Tony Stark would be completely baffled is very unbelievable. But those are some minor complaints because the rest of the movie is so spectacular. The acting is amazing. Robert Downey Jr. is absolutely perfect in the role. You've read all the reviews, you've seen everyone say it on YouTube and everywhere, all down the net, and everyone is right. Robert Downey Jr. is the man to play this role. No one could have done it better than him. The Gwyneth Paltrow is, is a, plays his assistant in the movie, and she is very unlike Gwyneth Paltrow, not until about halfway through the movie that I actually realized that Gwyneth Paltrow was playing this character. And it made me really happy because she completely becomes this calm character and she's really um, luminous in the role and very, 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 very pretty and very, just some very nice, delicate chemistry with Danny Jr. And not the usual kind of over-the-top um, superhero cheese that you see in a lot of other films. Then there's Jeff Bridges who plays um, 
who plays a man that Tony Stark has to go through to try to shut down Stark Industries. And Jeff Bridges is decent in the role. He's nothing exceptional. He's not as good as Paul Trout or Downey. Um, but he does his job, and I guess he's okay. The, the action scenes, there aren't actually very many action scenes, but what is there is very good and very badass and very entertaining. The special effects, even better than the action, the action itself, because there, there are scenes where Iron Man is building his suit, and you see a lot of special effects in those things, and those always work really, really well. And as he's building a suit and as he's becoming Iron Man, you really feel that sense of superhero exhilaration. Like when Peter Parker was flying through the streets of New York when he had his pajama Spidey suit on and he didn't know how to use his powers and he was flying all over the place. And when Downey Jr. first experiments with his suit and he goes flying out into the dark of the night, you really... <sighs> that feeling of exhilaration and of wonder and of discovery and of excitement is so truly rare in movies these days that, yeah, it should be really applauded when it's seen, and Iron Man hits it perfectly. The director, John Favreau, he's done Elf before, he also did Zathura, which were both very good family-friendly flicks, and he takes it into PG-13 territory here. Sometimes he gets a little away with the PG-13, I mean, Stark sleeps with every other woman he meets, and it's kind of like, that Favreau is like, hey, look how classy and awesome his life is, and he does go a little overboard, but that's completely forgivable. Um, on the whole, it's just a really, really great film, a solidly entertaining film, the perfect opening to the summer blockbuster season, and yeah, I highly recommend it, especially to comic book fans, and to those comic book fans, stick around after the credits, because after the credits, you'll see something unprecedented in the history of comic book movies, and it is well worth the wait. So yeah, I give Iron Man an 8 out of 10.